Big Green Creative Technology and Design, uh, Mata Communication. Uh, receivers, we are one of five teams that has four receivers with 100 yard receiving game this season, joining Miami, Penn State, Pitt, UCLA. Uh, so, four defensive sacks. We had seven sacks at Arizona. I'm going to have 16, 16 sacks in the last three games after getting just five in the first four games. We lead the Big 12. Defensive takeaways, we force three plus turnovers in three straight road games for the first time and since Moby Dick was a middle. Curtis, you said that? <laughs> I can't believe you said that, Curtis. It sounded like me. Darn it. Road wins, back-to-back, 27-point -back, road wins for the first time since I had a curl. <laughs> Curtis, you tripping, man. <laughs> you tripping today, man. This is the first time we won three straight games on the road since Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was spotted. Uh, we've had two of the largest and three top five row wins in the last 19 years this season. Now, that sounds like you. Uh, <laughs> this campus is unbelievable. Um, few of us walk around it every day. And I was just talking about how beautiful it is. And I never see them cut the grass. But the grass is always manicured. So I'm wondering, do they do that? Like, when do they do that? I'm, I'm serious. So as we were talking about that, a guy stops on his cart in front of us, gets off, shakes my hand, and he's the guy that does the rounds. As I was just saying that, so hats off to him. God bless you. That we have, I think, we have one of the best landscapes and and just department that takes care of our grounds because these grounds are impeccable. And I walk daily around this campus, and it is beautiful. And I never see one blade of grass out of uh, just out. And I see like several lakes that I need to do a deal with a bass company so I could put some bass in the lake so I could fish, you know, do on campus, but it's flat out beautiful. I just wanted to share that that moment. All right, let's get going. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Um, we just spoke with Jordan this week. He just, I mean, there's so much maturity. He's had such a great season so far. When you watch him, that's just incredible. What are you, how do you feel like you can see this is what we expected from Jordan. I don't know why you're surprised when uh, some kids get that five-star beside their name and they don't live up to expectations. But Jordan is a guy, when you talk to him, you do your background on him, you, you, you talk to family members, people that knew him coming up and understood what makes him who he is. He's kind of like a can't miss when you do your due diligence and your homework and you put him in the right <sighs> situation that he he don't need to be great he just needs to be him and having veterans around him upperclassmen that can mold him and take him to the next level then having the tremendous friendship and relationship that he has with Shador which he's invested like not only do I not want to play bad and give up a sack but I don't want them to touch my boy that's a whole different thought process so I'm glad and I'm thankful that he chose us. God bless his uncle, who played a vital role into helping him make that wonderful decision. But Jordan is, uh, he is exactly who we thought he would be, and then some, especially in the classroom and uh, off the field, in his practice habits. But, uh, Hi, Coach. I want to tell you about sports. And, uh, just hope to for an update on Travis and, and how he's doing and how this team looks with him. Travis is better than last week. I think he'll have more pro productivity because he's feeling much better than last week. And you could just tell with his little giddy up and the, the way he goes about life, a uh, little more pep in his step today. I think he did some conditioning today for sure to make sure he's on point with his conditioning because he never tires and we want to keep that um, what it is. But I think he will certainly contribute a lot more than he did a week ago because he's healthier. Coach Jake How you doing, Jake? Good, man. Excellent. Um, you guys have a lot of recruiting momentum right now. I'm just right. curious what your message is to them. My message don't change, you know, regardless of your record, regardless of uh, what you guys may think of the program. The messages don't change. Uh, we're uh, a team full of opportunities, and when we go out and get 
guys from high school, we have an expectation of them to play. We really want them to play. We don't want to put them on the back burner or sit them down and put them on the bench. We want them to play so they can see that. They can see where they fit. Um, there's a, a certain ratio that we want from the portal as well as from um, high school and uh, so forth that we have that balance. I can't tell you that right now because it, it's all how it plays out because you, you're you going to lose probably – two to three or maybe five unexpected players that may jump on you uh, in the portal. But you got to be prepared for that. So you factor that in as well. We we kind of know what we're doing. I know it, it didn't seem like we did early on, but we kind of – we've been doing this for a while, been building teams ever since I was a coach at the youth level that went in and made something out of nothing in, uh, in the hood in Dallas. So we kind of know how to – work the landscape a little bit and now it's coming to pass and we're excited about it but yes winning does help with recruiting the overall thought process of people joining something that's already successful people don't want to join something that's failing they want to join something that's successful so with the continued success we we pray that we do a better job in recruiting as well but you can't measure us by how many we pull out of high school why would you pull 30 kids out of high school when 30 kids are not going to play um I think we, I know last year we may have played arguably the most freshmen in uh, in the Big 12, but probably in the Pac-12 a year ago. And right now we've up, we've had up to three starters that were freshmen on the field at one time this year. So I think we do a tremendous job of getting those guys involved when they can handle the expectation. Hey, Coach, Brian Allen. How are you doing? Just a few weeks ago we were talking about front was um the practice habits film study preparation them receiving the coaching that administers to them each and every day them understanding what we want them um really just throwing their hands up and say i give i'm, I'm gonna do it your way our way ain't working. Let me do it your way, and it it it's working. When you have a a skilled defensive play caller, when you have two defensive line coaches that have come out of the NFL, and one is a Hall of Famer. When when you have guys that actually want it, and they got to understand, man, let let's let's do our jobs, and they're gonna come. Stop thinking about you. Uh, Resist the opportunity to become selfish and just play this game and watch what happens. And they understand that now. They understand it now. So you should see more. I think we missed five sacks last week, and we weren't proud of that. So what they're doing right now, we're not going to put baby powder on their chest and pat them down like the baby. We're not going to do that. We, we expect that. We expect them to be where they are right now. We expected that several weeks ago. they just now meeting a – expectation that we have for them. Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow. Good, sir. Um, just curious, early thoughts on Cincinnati. Cincinnati is great. Cincinnati, uh, they're playing really good football. If you match up statistically, we're kind of right there with one another. Our defense may have the edge just a little bit, but offensively, they have a lot more balance with running and, and passing the football. Um, I like what they're doing. They're not flashy and it's not a sexy thing, but they get the job done. And I love the way they attack. I love the way they get to the ball. I love what they're accomplishing this season. It's a tremendous task. We cannot make mistakes and we cannot start off slow. We got to go get them. We got to go at them. And that's what we plan on doing. Yes, sir. Last TV window national games where basically the entire sport watches all day and then Colorado plays and showcase, but it's also very late. Yeah, we 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 don't like it, but we do love it. You you don't like it because of the time, but you love it because we're chosen to be on television once again. I think that's several eight consecutive weeks that we're proud that we're chosen. It, it, and once upon a time that you, you was begging to be on television, so we're not gonna turn to, to their nose up 
at being on national television. Yeah, we could argue with the time, but we're still appreciative and thank you and thankful. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. I mean, you got to change the schedule. You got to prepare the kids because we practice in the morning. So now we got to do body adjustments, time adjustments, sleep adjustments for our young men so that they could start off fairly quickly. We hadn't started off quick in the night games because of that flips our whole schedule. Uh, we, we, we fared better in day games because that's who we are. But uh, we, we plan on making adjustments this week to, to make sure we get the proper sleep, the proper rest, and we're ready and prepared for kickoff, regardless of whatever time it is. How are you doing? Um, last year, when you guys got the fast start, it was you know, worldwide storm and there was soccer, but this year, it seems kind of more of a quieter time to start. Is that by design? Is it basically show, we're going to show you how to talk about it? I don't, I don't think you design yourself to be 5 and 2. You design yourself to be 7 and 0 oh if we're going to design it. You know, we're going to order it. Like that's, that's what we would want. No, we're, we're, we've earned what we are. Um, we actually feel like we're better than what we are because we're just starting to see the fruit of the work and the understanding of the expectation that we have for ourselves, get what others have of us, but what we have for ourselves. And, uh, you know, not that I'm looking back, but dropping the last one at home was tremendous. We could be in a much better place, but we control our own destiny and we like that. So we're going to apply pressure not only to our own team, uh, not only to the coaches, but we're going to apply pressure to the opposing teams because we want to win out. And we cannot do that without winning Saturday. Coach Harley, you've been a big sports report. That's three straight road games now where you guys have played three of the most crucial games in the season. Is there something about this group that likes going and playing in hostile environments? We like to be booed and they say it and hate it. That turns us on. <laughs> turns us on. It's kind of sexy, matter of fact. <laughs> That's how I felt when I played. I mean, I, I love to be on the road and be booed and they say it and hate it on it. it, it I think we like being the underdogs and we like being those type of people not that we don't look at uh the betting line or whatever underdogs meaning on the road away from home but we like that we like that we really do just a couple for you today uh first would be some situations have popped up over the last three or four games or so where mm -hmm. you've been faced with fourth down decisions yeah. right? like you were fourth and ten to thirty can you kind of take us kind of behind the scenes of what your thought process is on some of those, because some of them yeah. go against what analytics would say. Who is the guy named analytics? <laughs> I never met that. him. I never seen him. I don't know what he looked like. Is he a winner? Is he wealthy? Is he broke? Who is he? I don't know what he looks like. It's, it's, you got to know your team. Forget analytics, man. You got to know your team and what they're capable of. Sometimes it's just self-explanatory. Um, you know, I'm not, I, I wasn't a math major in college, but I was pretty smart. But I'm not going to sit there and do mathematics on the sideline. So when you see a flag on our sideline, that means we get the ball right there, Mata could kick it from there. That's what that means to me. I ain't got time to be adding 40 plus 7 plus 10. I ain't got time for that, man. I ain't got, I ain't got time. So when we get to that, if we hadn't got to that flag, we're probably going to go for it because punting, what does that do? It give you an extra 15 yards? That's, that's stupid. Give you an extra 20 yards? That don't make sense. So especially with the quarterback we have and the offense the skill set that we have. And sometimes we go for it. Sometimes, uh, no, I don't like the momentum. I don't like the field. I don't like the conversation I just heard. I don't like it. Let's get out of it. Let's, let's punt the ball. You know, and, and sometimes we may have a call coming in that I see a, all that we had a call uh, last week. It was a zero coverage. And let's see how strong safety on their best receiver. Time out. Time out, time. See, you guys don't hear all that. You see all that stuff. Like, hey, hey, time out. I don't like that. I know what's about to happen right here. And, you know, so um, it, it's a feeling, and it's on me. You know, when when it's, we when we succeed, um, I like everyone else get the credit for it. But when we fail, I don't mind taking it because it's on me. The other one I have for you today is you went out this offseason and hired you know, some new members of your coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Several of them had not who is that? Robert Livingston. Yeah, he's a pro. He was a pro. I think he, he. I think his pay grade 
what he brought to the table was above that job title. He that, just, yeah. That's, that's true. But right. I guess my point was just from an experience standpoint. From experience of being a pro football coach in the NFL and a college coordinator, a pro football coach and a college coordinator, not only a pro football coach, a defensive back coach of the NFL. Think about who he's coaching in the NFL to be able to control his room, to be able to have that voice and, and me to talk to what, like a kid, like a son to me, Adam Packman and Jones, tell me how he handled the room. And he validates it. Mike Zimmer uh, and, and Marvin Lewis and so forth who validated him. Shoot, that's a no brainer, man. I think my question was, this is not just him, right? Right. Bill hadn't done that before technically yet either. How have you felt? Who? Coach Local. See, the thing about it, just because they don't have a title, that don't mean they wouldn't demand. Oh, I imagine. But okay. So, from a title perspective. I ain't, I ain't with that. Okay. Because a lot of folks that with titles in this room right now ain't doing their job. Somebody else is doing it. All right? As well as many people, right? Yeah. That, that's just how life is. The title does not constitute the job. So... I just want you to know that in life now. So we do our homework and understand this guy may not have the title, but he did all the work. So you got to go do a little deeper research in what we did with these young men. Even with Sapp. Sapp ain't never been no darn coach. And so I guess he got a gold jacket. I guess my question was, how proud of you are of them, of the staff, of your hires, of seven games through the season? Tremendously. Tremendously. But we're not near where we want to be. Because, you know, like I hold myself accountable for what goes wrong around here. Um, when we're not getting the job done, a kid would only do what you allow. So when, when we have those positions that are not playing up to the standard, that, that's on the coaches and that's on me. So we got we to gotta make sure we handle that. And we got a bunch of guys that are like-minded that can handle that. And I love it. I, I, I love pro football coaches. I mean, college football coaches, I adore them. But I'm a pro guy. I like those pros. I really like those guys that came from that level because we, we kind of connect a little better. They kind of understand what I want, what I desire, how I think a lot better than at the collegiate level. A lot of college coaches, they're wonderful coaches. I mean, phenomenal. I, I can't hold some of their jocks. But some of them rely on scheme. Pros rely on man consummate the scheme. College coaches really rely on a lot of schemes sometimes that they brought over. Let's play this scheme. No, no, you got to get them in to buy into what you're trying to not sell them, but uh, place them in those responsibilities that they can handle it. And sometimes the collegiate level don't do that. They just so bent over on what they bring to the table instead of understanding you got a room full of guys don't do that. You may need to change a little bit and, uh, and allow them to be who they are. Mark Good question, though. How you doing, Jay? Good. Yeah, that's not easy. You, you, if I start reminiscing about that, it'll start, you know, going the other way on me. I start thinking about the end instead of thinking about we just getting started. But uh, we talk about it some. We don't talk about it a lot. Um, we think about it some. We don't think about it a lot. It just so happens that when Shador and I was making the walk last week, Shallow joined in. That was the first time he ever did that. Usually he wants his individual time, his individual prayer, his individual everything. But he joined in, and uh, and Junior was right behind us filming it, and somebody captured all three of us, you know, in one setting. And it was the most beautiful thing ever. So I'm like, I got to have that picture. That has to go up on the on the crib in, in the crib in Texas like that has to go up so that was a beautiful moment and we we treasure those moments we really do hey coach Tyler Baker. how you doing Tyler? I want to ask you about Shane Cokes uh, obviously he's a guy that has been here throughout your entire tenure here one of the guys that you talked about very early on mm -hmm. in the first spring you got here uh how valuable has he been in just the, the turnaround the defense has made from last year to this year and where you guys are at this point Shane is a staple Shane is a uh, consistent. Shane is going to watch probably the most film of any defensive lineman. Shane is going to be where he's supposed to be. He's going to do what he's supposed to do. He kind of corrals all the guys up front and makes sure they're doing the necessary things they need to do for us to be successful. He is who he is. What I wish, I want him to be a little more relentless. 
a little more like selfish, if you would ask, like a little more, just go get it and just leave it, everything you got out there on the field. Not that he's not, but I just want him to get a little nastier. You know, go give me a penalty every now and then. <laughs> Everybody else says he might as well join us. <laughs> Um, Jimmy is Jimmy, man. Jimmy don't complain. Jimmy don't cry, bicker, murmur. Jimmy, Jimmy ain't like that. Jimmy wants to get in what he fit in. But everybody, including the scouts, know the value of Jimmy Horn. Just because he's not receiving. 10 balls at a time, that does not mean he's not valuable because a lot of digs that we're getting is because Jimmy just cleaned out the house running a nine right up the seam to make it, uh, to make it available for all the other guys. So Jimmy do a lot of the grunt work. Um, we had him on a couple screens last week where we, we weren't successful. We missed a block here and there um, to get him the ball. But I promise you, he's in every game plan. We want to get him the ball. Sometimes the the game plays out a little different than you really rehearsed it that it would be. But Jimmy Horn is a professional football player just playing at the collegiate level for this moment. I love everything about him. I love the way he practices. Um, when he touches the ball on special teams, he's going to make a big play. That's why we start utilizing him on the punt return a lot more because every team we play kicks the ball out of the dirty end zone. we got to figure out why we're not kicking the ball out of the dirty end zone. Um, but Jimmy is – Phenomenal. I love everything about him. Love who, who he is as a man. Not drinking, not smoking. He don't party a club much. I mean, he's a good kid, and I love him to life. And I'm going to make sure he gets to the next level. Excuse me? Yeah, Jimmy's great. Yeah. How you doing, sir? Uh, so, um, every morning, I, I got a minute. I turn the audio. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm? You know, your morning motivation, mm -hmm. not mine, but what's yours to do what it is? I've been laughing. I send a, mo a message out every morning. Okay, you better I'm check your busy. gram. I don't miss <laughs> Monday <laughs> through Friday. My message is consistent. I don't work on weekends. Like I'm doing something else called football coach. But no, Monday through Friday, um, I'm morning messages out anywhere from 4 50 a.m. until probably 7 a.m. So it's it's there, right, Neil? That's correct. Yeah, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. You got to play World Series. I don't care about no World Series <laughs> <laughs> at all. Oh, God ain't forget you. The real question is, did you forget him when you wake up, when you turn on the lights, when you run the water, when you reach in the refrigerator, when you get in your car, and before you get a get to wherever you're going. Do you say, Lord, I thank you. Don't forget who's responsible. How can you miss that one? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that one. I think 27,000 other people got it, my brand. <laughs> Last one's got it, right? How you doing, my man? Good. Each of the top four running backs, I believe, have kind of changed to start. I think they said that's by designing. Yes. Is that something you expect? Well, you, you want one of them to jump out and, and stand shoulders above the others. Um, we're going to go back with the big fella again this week. Um, the one who started last week. <laughs> I called him two, three. Uh, uh, give me the name. You know, how, yeah, I you, know you know how I am. I forget everybody. I can't remember Neely's name right there. Right, Neely? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can't remember. yeah. Of my uh, Naples, uh, Naples franchise player. Uh, he hits it. He's physical, he runs downhill, he's not second guessing, trying to bounce to the outside. And at times we need that. There's different schemes and different approaches for different teams. This this team we're gonna need because they three man front, they may drop eight on us, you know, to stop the fast game. We're gonna need to gash him. And the big fella, he does not hesitate. He downhill and uh he's going and he wants it. I mean, he wants it, like yeah, all the rest of them. But one has an ankle, one has a hamstring, and Charlie is Charlie, old oh, faithful. Like the little engine that could, he just putting away. He he he's doing his thing. So, but uh, Gustav, he, he's going to get to start again this week. 
Thanks, folks. Thank you. God bless you all. Appreciate you.